I'm Nancy Kamwisher, and I'm an investigator at the McGovern Institute for Brain Research. Until recently, it's been very difficult to study the neural basis of cognition because this was sort of thought to happen all over the brain in a kind of disorganized way. It was very controversial whether high-level aspects of cognition, thinking, are organized into compartmentalized separate bits. Years ago, I had a really brilliant graduate student named Rebecca Sachs who said that she wanted to look for brain regions that are involved in how we think about what another person is thinking. And I thought that was a pretty cool question, but I just didn't believe for a moment that the brain had specialized regions for things that are that abstract. And boy, was I wrong. The region of the brain that's selectively involved in thinking about what another person is thinking is a prime candidate for a region that would be affected in autism. Hey, as best yeah, as anybody can tell, the core deficit in autism is one of being able to understand other people's thoughts. Oh, yeah, possibly, yes. Nancy's the perfect example of someone who spent her whole life understanding human cognition and in recent years applying brain imaging technology to understanding human cognition. You ready? And now she's going to take a battery of these tests to get that very basic understanding of what is it that's going wrong in the brains of these kids suffering from autism. Hi. I think when Jackson was about two, when most parents are expecting their children to start making sounds and say words. He said a couple things. He said kitty and he said daddy. He never actually lost any language, but he just didn't gain any more words than that. I think those signs were enough as an educator for me to know that there was something up. You hear things about, you know, children who are on the autism spectrum who just love street signs or just love music. He loves everything. I, I love books. They are really fun to read. I've recently read Diary of a Wimpy Kid book free. When we walked into the McGovern Institute, he was just flabbergasted. I think he wanted to go out and come back in again because he, he just didn't know what to think about it. And then he just got comfortable there very quickly. What was nice about the passport for Jackson was he, he could have something tangible. This is when I got my brain scan, and there's a picture. Something to carry around with him all day. It's an x-ray view into, it's kind of like an x-ray view into my body when I hold it up like this. Scanning any kids is tricky. It's right at the edge of what you can do in neuroscience research. They're looking for the things of, they're looking for keys of autism inside my brain. It's pretty freaky. I tell everybody that we are at MIT doing this because the finger is on the pulse there. The fact that we could go in and get a picture of his brain, I mean, where else can you do that? Do you think what you're doing is going to help some other kids? Yeah, I know. I know it will help. We're hoping that we'll discover not just a, a characterization of this disorder and what it looks like, but they will also discover uh, distinct subtypes of autism. And if we can discover that there are three or even 10 different kinds of autism, that will be major progress. Autism is an incredibly complex disorder that just isn't understood at all. Uh, so this is a much harder problem than anything I've tried to do before. Uh, on the other hand, the stakes are higher. It really matters.